Amy from the blog At A Girl Says, uh, where I share ideas to make your home brighter and your heart lighter. Today I'm hanging out and sharing stress-free holiday hosting tips, so I hope you'll settle in, grab a cup of coffee, and join me for a, a hangout. Um, and this is my first hangout on air, so who knows what could happen. I'm just hoping you can see me. Um, although I feel pretty comfortable doing this. You know, I have uh, been talking to myself for years and pretending I have my own lifestyle show when I'm decorating or cooking, so I feel like I'm an old pro at this. Um, you know, besides the decorating and the presents, um, my favorite part of the holidays is entertaining, getting to spend time with friends and family. So many times during the year we don't take that time to slow down and really reconnect with those people who are important to us. And so that's the great thing about the holidays. Um, but a no hosting a party at this time of year can be pretty stressful because of all the other demands on your time. Um, you know, there seems like there's always something going on around the holidays, but I would encourage you, don't stress out. Holiday parties are supposed to be about having fun, reconnecting with friends and family, enjoying the season and all it has to offer. And you know, that's my number one tip. Have fun. Remember the reason for your holiday get-together. I mean, I'm assuming it's because you really want to see these people and hang out with them and, you know, just have good conversation, good good food, good drink, good times. Um, and chances are your guests are coming because they want to spend time with you. Uh, they, uh, you know, and you set the tone for the event. If you seem stressed out, then your guests are going to seem stressed out. Um, they're going to feel stressed out. So remember to, to be calm, as calm as you can be. And um, I know that's easier said than done. Trust me, I have a room full of re relatives coming on um, Saturday. And, you know, I, I, there's a lot to do between now and then. Um, and I, I want it to be a nice, fun party. I want everybody to have a good time. I want the food to be great. Um, so I know... I know where you're coming from, um, you know, but I have a plan and I have a to-do list as tall as this Christmas tree here and that's going to help me keep the stress at bay, I hope. And maybe I won't even fuss at my husband once. He'll be happy about that. So tip two is communicate with your guests. Send them an invitation, send them an email, give them a call on the phone, let them know what what time they're expected, what what you're serving, um, you know, what time you're going to have have dinner, or um, uh, sorry, I'm messing with my tips here. So let me let me take that one off. I uh, lost my train of thought. That's that's what happens when you go live. Um, so anyway, let your communicate important information with your guests, maps, directions, times, menu, because they're going to have those questions and you would rather them ask those questions, you know, in the weeks and days leading up to the event, not when you're in the crunch time, you know, when you got your hands in pot holders and you're trying to bring a ham out of the oven and the last thing you want to be doing is answering your cell phone giving someone directions although you should be prepared to do that and maybe designate and dele delegate that to someone else who will be less busy and you know by all means if someone asks can I help can I bring something say yes unless it's that friend who makes those sawdust brownies then you can you may still say yes but have a backup plan you know, that brings me to tip number three. Not the sawdust brownies, but the part about letting other people help. Delegate. Give other people jobs to do. Not even Martha Stewart does it alone. She has help, and so should you. I just sent my husband an email to-do list yesterday of all the things that we need to do and get done before the party. And... Um, I actually use a cool little app 
on my iPhone and or on my iPad rather and I broke down the list by room of our house. See this is my son Jackson's room. We have a long list like clean up which you know we should probably do that at 11.59 since our guest will be coming around uh, 1 o'clock. You know but it, it breaks it down by room uh, what what needs to be done as far as cleaning, decor, last minute decorating, and then obviously, you know, I have my um, day of to do list too. You know, and I even gave my son, who's six, a job. Um, you know, I've asked him to make up a basket of uh, safe toys that are safe and appropriate for his younger cousins. This gives him something to do, gets him invested in our party. You know, I think it also gives him the opportunity if there's some special toys that he doesn't want the little ones playing with, then he can put those away. You know, and I'm, I've also been farming out cooking assignments to any family member who has asked, what can I bring? And I'm going to send you something, Uncle Glenn, soon. I might have you pick up the ice. Um, you know, that brings me to tip number four. Have a menu. Don't fly by the seat of your pants. If you're going to procrastinate about anything, don't let it be about your menu or about what you're serving. Set that early so you can start making a grocery list and prepping things in advance. And um, that way you can take advantage of some of the sales that the stores have. What you can't see in the other room is that I have some Chex Mix uh, still cooling on the table in there. Uh, that's going to be one of our appetizers, one of our little noshing snacks uh, on Saturday before the guests get here. And, uh, you know, made that ahead of time. Um, and, you know, nothing says you have to do all the cooking on the day of your event. In fact, I'm not really planning on using my oven for much more than reheating things on um, Saturday. I do have to cook a ham, which, you know, I'm going the spiral sliced easy route. That's what we like, and it's easy. Don't complicate things um, for yourself. You know, Friday evening will probably be a pretty big cooking day for us, and I'll work on that some during the afternoon, put my husband to work, as my sous chef um, after our son goes to bed um, and you know I, I'll be making my world famous wontons which I will be sharing the recipe next week on the blog and we're gonna have some stuffed acorn squash I'm gonna prep all of that ahead of time so all I have to do is put it in the oven on on Saturday and you know when you have a menu you'll know what holes you have so you can ask others to bring things. You know, my mama makes awesome desserts and a killer sweet potato casserole. So that's what I've asked her to bring. And my cousin Shannon's rolls are so, are delicious and much more complicated than it, I'd want to attempt. So I've asked her to bring that and a salad, um, which she brought to another family gathering that was just terrific. You know, I, now I, I'm not saying you have to bring this, you have to bring that. I, you know, I've asked if they wouldn't mind bringing a certain thing or would that be okay. You want to give your 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 guests, particularly those who are contributing, if it's a potluck, to you want to give them the ability to um, bring what they'd like to bring. Remember, they're busy, they're stressed out too. They may not want to do um, the the beef burgundy that takes days and days and days. So um, and speaking of complicated I know you may want to try a new recipe, but don't, unless you have time to really test it ahead of time. Stick with dishes and techniques that you know. You'll avoid so much stress this way. You don't want to be um, trying a new recipe, because what if that killer entree you pinned isn't, doesn't taste good or takes longer to cook than you anticipated? What, are you, what would you do? What would you serve your guests? Take them to McDonald's? Well, actually, you know what? That might be fun. If something like that happens, don't stress out. A little different if it's on Christmas Day, but, you know, there's always a Chinese restaurant or a deli open, so go with the flow. 
Okay, now we're on to tip five, or maybe I should call it tip 4B because it kind of ties in with having a menu, and that's have a plan. Even if you're not a planner or a list maker, make one. I know what I need to get done every day between now and the party, and I showed you the to-do list. It's my blueprint for the day and, you know, it, and the week, and it's so helpful. Um, and it's going to help things go off without a hitch on Saturday, or so I hope. Um, you know, my friend Susie from the blog Worthing Court had a great tip uh, that she shared with me, and I want to share it with you. She creates a timeline of what she needs to do on the day of her event and works backwards from the time she's serving. So, say if dinner's at 6 o'clock, she knows that by 4.45 she needs to put the uh, mac and cheese in the oven so it's cooked and ready to serve when she's ready to serve. Um, Susie says she refers to her list all day long to keep her on task. And here's my favorite part. She even schedules in time for herself to take a break off her feet um, so she's not exhausted when her guests arrive. I love that. I'll be penciling in some HGTV time on Saturday and maybe a manicure later this week. I actually intended to get that done before my hangout, but other things took precedent. Uh, the whole notion of a timeline is really important because it forces you to consider whether you have the time to do everything that you want to do for your party. Then you can adjust your party plans accordingly. For example, I don't have time to paint my bathroom before my guests arrive on Saturday. Uh, not and get everything else done, but I do have time to clean it. So set real, realistic expectations for yourself and you'll have a much better hosting experience. You don't have to be perfect. Now on to some down and dirty, really practical tips that will help with the party flood. Tip six, and this, this is one that sometimes catches us all. all. Start with a clean slate. Make sure your dishwasher is empty and your sink is clean. Your fridge is cleaned out because you're going to need room for things that guests are bringing, wine, that sort of thing, uh, extra dishes. And the last thing you want to ha have happen is for your to have to have your prep dishes um, in your in your sink. Just doesn't work. You want to have space to work. You want to have space for your ingredients. You want to have space for extra groceries that are necessary to throw a party. You want to have room for dishes that guests bring. So start with a clean slate. Run that dishwasher early in the morning. Empty it. Okay, here's tip seven. Set up ahead of time. When it comes to parties, I don't like waiting to the last minute to do things. Ask my husband. I was all over him about setting up the tables for our son's backyard birthday party a few months ago. It wasn't something that needed to wait. You know, the, was not a last minute detail that I needed to worry about. So that just stresses me out big time. You know, we're having a potluck. People are bringing things to our party on Saturday. And so it'll be served buffet style. So I'm going to set out my dishes with pretty little... Uh, holiday dishes the night before on the buffet table. You know, they'll be cleaned and if I need to, I can cover them with a dish towel so they don't get any dust on them. Um, I'll probably put out my silverware, maybe even my napkins ahead of time. Maybe the night before, maybe a few days ahead of time. And I'm going to do the same for my drinks, drink stations. I'll set them up out of the main thoroughfare of the kitchen because I want guests to be able to serve themselves and I don't want them to be in the kitchen where I'll be working. You know, it just, you don't want people bumping in and out. And you kind of want to encourage people to, to mingle in other parts of the house, even though I know the kitchen is the favorite part, place to hang out whenever there's a party. Um, I also, I started doing this a few years ago and it just makes things so much easier. I also label my serving dishes ahead of time. So I have this bowl, and it says green beans. I actually don't know if we're going to be having green beans, but this was a good prop for the hangout. And I just put a little post-it in it, 
set it out, and this serves two purposes. Helps me get my mind around things, so I know I have enough serving dishes and serving pieces, so I would probably have a spoon too. But it also lets people who are helping know what your intentions are, and you don't it's a quick way to communicate it. You got this cute little post-it note, holiday post-it that I got a few years ago on clearance at Target. Um, I just write the name of the dish on the post-it note and put it in the bowl or pan. That way your husband will not put taquitos on your three-tiered tray. Oh, I did that one time. I left them in the wrapper too. I'm just teasing, Bruce. I know you're probably watching. Um, I think I said I'll uh, also make sure to pull out my serving ware um, ahead of time to make sure I have enough. And you, you're going to want to set some out for the dishes that guests are bringing to because during crunch time you don't want to have to be uh, rummaging in drawers trying to find a slot, another slotted spoon. Um, tip eight, designate a place. When your guests start arriving, they're probably going to be loaded down with stuff and they're going to have questions. Um, where can I put my purse? Where do I hang my coat? What do you want me to do with my dish? Um, you know, I brought a hostess gift. Oh, thank you. I really, I, I really appreciate that. Family, hostess gifts Saturday. Just teasing. You don't have to bring anything. But, you know, people do bring little hostess gifts. And um, you need to be prepared for this stuff ahead of time. Clear out a coat closet or stash purses in the master bedroom. The designer purses go in my closet, just in case you're wondering. Um, and if you're, you know, if a guest gives you a hostess gift, thank them. Have a place where you set those aside. Make sure, you know, your husband and your kids know where those should go to so that you can take some time later when things are less busy to, to, open those and to really show your gratitude to your guests. Um, you know, people may ask you for a house tour and certainly you can give those, but don't feel like you have to do that as soon as people walk in the door. That's how you burn your bread, your biscuits. So uh, say, I'd love to give you a tour. Let me do that. When some, when things calm down or I'll give a, a tour to the whole group, um, you know, that way, that just lowers your stress. Okay, tip number nine, which uh, I forgot to type out. So I'm doing that right now. Uh, and I will turn it on. Tip nine is have extras. I cannot stress this enough. You don't want to run out of essentials when you're throwing a party. Stock your bathrooms with extra toilet paper. Might not be pretty, but it's even less pretty if your guest has to yell, hey, I need some toilet paper. And I can just imagine my six-year-old doing that. Um, love you, Jackson. Um, make sure you have extra towels in the bathroom. Make sure your soap dispensers are full. Put extra hangers in the coat closet. No wire hangers ever! Does anybody know that reference? Um, uh, you know, but because chances are, the, the hangers in particular, chances are you're going to have guests with more coats than you have hangers for. So make a plan for that. Get extra ice for drinks. You're going to need it. And you'll probably go through at least one around the paper towels, or I know I do, so I have extra on hand. Ditto for dish towels. And, of course, you want to make sure you have enough food and drink for your guests air on the side of gluttony. Oh, I locked my dog in the bedroom accidentally, so she's barking. I apologize. Uh, we're on to tip 10, so she can bark for a few minutes. Uh, relax. Have a good time. Chill out. Loosen up. It's a party. Not brain surgery. Um, another blogging pal of mine, Laura, of Top This, Top That, suggested having a glass of wine to help melt the stress away. You know what? I think that is a brilliant idea. <sighs> Actually, that's apple juice and water because I'm on some cough medicine that I don't know interacts very well with um, uh, 
with wine, and it is 12.20, so I haven't started drinking yet. Um, you know, but if wine's not your thing or you're worried about how um, it'll affect you other than chilling you out, find another way to chill out. Take a short walk. Have a cup of coffee. Do some yoga or deep breathing exercises. Meditate. Pray. Play with your kids. You know, enjoy a big belly laugh. Listen to some music. Dance. Uh, just loosen up and remind yourself it's a party. Have fun. So I hope that you have found these tips, these 10 tips, useful and that you'll put them to practice when you're having your holiday uh, events, when you're hosting. Don't stress out. It's not a time for stress. It's a time to have fun with friends and family. I will be recapping these uh, tips and, uh, and others and would love to certainly have your suggestions. Um, I'll have those on my blog later this week uh, at atagirlsays.com. So I hope you'll visit me there. And I have certainly enjoyed hanging out with you. And hopefully you guys saw me. Now on to tackle some things on my to-do list. Have a great day and Merry Christmas.